Welcome to class. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, today we're going to paint this picture here of the sunset. And um, my name is Liz for uh, you first timers. Um, we are going to start by wetting the canvas. This is a wet on wet technique and you can wet the canvas with different mediums. Uh, it depends upon what effect you want. So you can wet it with an oil like a liquid or an oil medium. You can wet it with a uh, white, like a magic white or a liquid white, if you want to soften your color. So today we're going to uh, soften our colors uh, because we want to get a pink color, not just a red color. Um, so I'm going to use a white and I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to dab my canvas and I'm going to bring this to you. And I'm just going to put a thin coat of this all over my canvas and I'm going to spread it and put a thin coat of this. And what we do with that medium, regardless of what you're using, is the point is to get a thin coat of it everywhere on your canvas. It gets into the teeth of the canvas and it allows you to blend your colors. Um, it gets into the teeth so you don't have to use very much oil paint. So if you decide you want to change something, you can do that easily. If I just went straight on the canvas with that color, it stains that color uh, onto the canvas. Whereas when I use an oil or the white, it allows you to take an, uh, an eraser. You can lift that right off the canvas. So that's why we use the wet on wet we can change it easy. So after I think I have it spread everywhere, I can either go side to side or I can go up and down. And that's going to evenly distribute that on my canvas. And so I don't have a big chunk of it anywhere. And that also helps to ensure I have it spread everywhere on my canvas. Okay. So we're going to start with the red and put the pink in the sky. Now you can have as much pink or as little pink as you want. If you like a lot of pink, you could have your whole sky be pink. If you don't like pink, you don't have to have any pink. So this is where you're going to start making the painting your own. I'm going to take that red and I'm going to get a little bit on my brush and I'm going to start about halfway and I'm going to brush that back and forth and it's going to blend with that liquid white. So if I keep blending, it gets lighter in color. If I put a lot on, it's going to stay dark. I don't want it to be one solid shade. So I want different shades in there. I'm not going to do a straight line of pink, a straight line of blue. So I'm going to vary it a little bit. I'm also going to put a little bit down in the water. I want to have a little bit of glow down in here where this water is. So while I've got it on my brush, I'm just going to put a little bit down here. Right now, I don't know where anything lives. I just know I'm going to have some water down here and I want some pink in my water. Now, I love pink and I love purple, so I'm going to put a lot of pink in here. My granddaughter and I, we love pink and we love purple. All right, no set shapes, no sh set colors. There's nothing even in nature for you perfectionists. This is a great way to get over having everything symmetrical. We don't have anything like that. If you do, I make you change it. I love helping people get over trying to be perfect. We can't. We can't do that. There's nothing perfect in nature. All right. Now, if I look up here, it looks different than when I back away. So I have to back away to see if I want more. Do I have everything even? Do I want to make any changes? Well, I'm OK with that for now, so I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to take a paper towel. The dry paper towels are for your brushes. I use baby wipes to wipe my hands off. Not that you're going to get paint on your hands, but you know, face. yeah, your hands, your face, yeah. Um, so I'm going to wipe that brush off with the dry paper towel. 
And I'm going to go ahead and go into the blue, phthalo blue, that's my next color. You could use Payne's gray, that's a pretty blue color. Whatever blue you've got. So I'm going to get a little bit of that blue. Now that's a strong color, so I'm going to go real, real light. I'm going to start kind of up in the corner, kind of brush it in. And when I get to the pink color, I'm going to brush it in and lift off so I don't lose that pink. I'm not going to do a halo around it. I don't want to avoid it. I'm going to pull in and lift off. We want a friendly sky. We want a friendly sunset where these colors just kind of meld together. If you like a darker sky, you can have some dark colors coming in. But it's really, really easy to pull a bunch of dark color into this pink and then lose the pink. So you just want to be careful not to lose that pink shade. Up at the top, I'm just going to kind of go back and forth a little bit, soften those brush strokes. Now some people really, really like to put brush strokes in their paintings, and that's fine. Some people like to soften them away, and that's where the art is your own. So if you like brush strokes, leave them. If you don't, soften them away. Make it your own. Do it how you like it. If you like to twirl your brush a little bit, twirl your, uh, move your brush a little bit. If you like it straight across, move it straight across. You're telling about the sky. You're creating a, a picture and telling a story when you do a painting. So what story are you telling your viewer about this picture? Sometimes the story you know ahead of time, and so you want to put it on the canvas. Sometimes the story just happens and unfolds as you're painting. I have a little hair right here. I'm just going to pop it right off. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of pull these together. Now where the blue and the pink go together, it's going to make a shade of purple. Now we're going to add some purple in, but this is a natural shade of purple where these pink and purple or pink and blues come together. I'm also picking up some pink when I go across that pink and I can take that up and that's going to give me some shades of color that are natural sunset colors. Okay, so after I get some of that coloring in, I'm not done with my sky, but I'm okay with that so far. If I want some darker shade up at the top still, I can go back and add some more blue. If I want some darker blue, I am going to put some purple in here, which will also make it darker. But if I want darker blue, I can add some. If I'm okay with it, I can leave it. So make sure you look away. While I've got some blue on my brush, I'm going to come down to my water. The only difference with your sky and your water is water is flat. So you want to make sure that brush goes flat left to right as opposed to the sky. The sky can go any direction. And I don't know where any land lives right now, so I can bring this water all the way down to the bottom. And when I do these pictures, I tend to paint on an angle, so you may be seeing my water going whoop. So I'm going to look at it here in a minute and make sure my water is not sliding off the canvas. Yeah, it's tending to go down. I tend to do that. So I'm going to change the direction of my water to make it look like it's flatter. 
because I don't want it to angle off my canvas from holding my head on an angle. And let's see if that looks a little bit flatter. Yeah. That's why we look at it. Back away and look at it. Make sure that everything looks even and flat and who I just want to be there right now and relax. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe that brush off. And now I'm going to go to my fan brush. Mm, no, I take that back. I lied. I'm going to stick with that same brush here. I'm going to go to the third color, but I'm going to go just with the tip of my brush. The third color is dioxide purple. I love that shade of purple. I'm going to get just a little bit of it at a time. And I'm just going to kind of pull in and kind of rub in that purple. Now you can have as much purple as you want. You can have a whole bunch of purple. You can have a little bit. I'm just doing a little tiny bit at a time so it doesn't overpower the canvas. Because it's a sunset, you'll see a little bit of a shade of purple, but I don't want to have a ton of purple. So I'm going to pull this in more like there are clouds coming in into that sunset. So I have a little bit. If I want darker, I can get darker, but I'm still kind of rubbing it into the canvas and into that pink, okay? And then I'm going to look and see, do I have it too even? Do I have enough? Well, here, if I have that too even, I can wipe that brush and I can go over it and kind of blend it together and make that more purple. That liquid, that white underneath, the, if you used oil or if you used white, it's going to allow you to blend it. That's what wetting the canvas does. So you can have more, you can have less, okay? I'm also going to put some of that purple into my water because I'm reflecting what I do in my water. So I'm going to add a little bit of this down here and down in here. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just kind of putting some color down there as well. Okay. Then I'm going to look away and see, do I have enough purple? Do I have enough pink? Did I lose a lot of pink? Do I want to add some more red or pink to my sky now? You know, do I want some more color up in here, some more red with that pink? You know, I could add some darker red up with my purple. Okay, so this is where you're going to look at it now and decide before we add some white up in here. So this is your sunset. We get some beautiful sunsets in here. Tennessee has gorgeous sunsets. I'm going to take my fan brush now and I'm going to go to the white. And I'm going to load some paint up on the end of that white brush, or on the end of that fan brush. And I'm going to load the paint on there. And where you've got some dark, so let's say you made a, more of a muddy color in your sky that you don't like by adding that purple, okay? Sometimes you get more of a muddy color with that red and purple. Then you can take and put a cloud on that color. Or if you've got a dark, blue or dark purple and you want to add a cloud there, you can take that uh, fan brush and you can do either a like a straight line cloud, just kind of take that brush and let it pull back and forth. Or you can take and load some paint on that brush and you could kind of uh, bump that brush around, like do some little uh, curves with that brush, just kind of let it bounce a little bit. And then you're going to take that big brush and you're going to wipe it off 
and just real softly, you're just going to kind of pull across. And you, we're just going to give it the indication that there are some clouds in the sky. You could do a little arch and give it some little stringy things. If you keep going across it, it's going to make it more of a hazy cloud, which a lot of times in sunsets, there's hazy clouds. So then I'm going to look at it. Maybe I want some little white ones down in here by these dark colors. A lot of times there's some white down by the dark. So I'm going to do a few more down in here just to add some more color to that sky. You can have as few or as many. You could twirl that um, corner of that brush and make it a little bit more rounded if you want. Just depends upon what you want. How many do you want? Where do you want them? I don't know. I don't know what your story is, what you're trying to tell. You might pick up some color in that white while you're doing it. You might pick up some blue so that maybe it's more of a light blue in that white. It's not just pure white, and that's okay. Sometimes clouds have a grayish color. Kind of like that. Maybe I want some more pink in here. Now that I got that, now that I got that uh, white in, I want to soften that out some. So you're just going to look at it. You're going to make one small change. You're going to look at it, make one small change, because you don't want to change everything that you've just worked on. Maybe I want some white in here. Make a change, then look. Make a change, then look, until you get it the way you like it. And we're going to go to the land here in the middle. We're going to go to these trees here. Or maybe they're hills to you instead of trees. Um, they could be little bushy trees. It could just be a line of trees off in the distance. I'm not sure how you see them. So I'm going to take uh, my filbert brush. It's a, um, looks like it's got a little rounded uh, end on it. And I'm going to go to this uh, green here that's next to the white. It's a dark green. It's called green black. And I'm going to use the side of that filbert brush if I want a thinner line, or I can use the Y brush if I want it to be a fatter bush looking. Okay, so those are the two that I'm going to use. Now, because I want to see this center, I'm going to start in the middle. Because if I start out here, and let's say I started it up here, then I would come across and I would lose all of this. Or if I started down here. So whenever I have something in the middle that I want to make sure that I see, I always start in the middle. That way I know I'm going to have it where I want. So I'm going to start in here, and you can do like little lines if you want, so you can get some narrow tops. You can um, do little taps to make it fuzzier. I don't care about the bottom line. We're going to do some reflections on the bottom and take care of that. All I care about in here is the tops. I want these tops to all be uneven. So you can pull down, you can tap, you can squish it. Um, you can always come back to and make it a little bit more uneven. You can even add some of the green that is next to it and change your color up a little bit so that it's a different shade of green. But if you load that brush, if I load this brush and pull down both sides, that's going to help me to get that uh, chiseled edge on that brush where I can get it real thin 
and then I can get more of a straight line in here. I can get that to be thin in here. And I'm just going to go across here. Do, do, do. I don't want a fence post. I don't want to just go straight across and have it all be even. You can put your finger down here if you need to, to kind of hold your hand. I want that sunset behind it to show. Maybe I want a bigger bush looking tree back in here. Maybe it's a little leafy tree and I want it to be bigger. You can do that. Maybe it's a tall, thinner, bushy tree. You know, change it up. It doesn't all have to be real thin looking. Maybe I can tap in some little bushy looking things in here. And if you don't think that this is what it looks like, then start looking at nature. And when you're driving down the road, well, be careful if you're driving, but when you're out, start looking at tree lines far away, and this is what they look like. Just kind of start looking at nature different. When you start painting, you see shapes different and colors different. And You can, if you want to, just kind of go straight across. And then you can go back and change it if you want to. Or if you get it all in a straight row, you can go back and change it. That's one thing that's neat about art. You're not locked into anything. You can change your mind. You get a painting that's dry and, and you know, you worked on it. And then you decide, man, I, I wish I would have put some trees in there or maybe some more flowers or I would have done this. You can go back and work on it and you can still change it and make it how you want it. You can do whatever you want to with art. So I'm just going to tap some in here, pull down some lines. I don't want it to look like a fence post. I want it to look like some distant trees and trees that are closer. So I'm going to have some different shades of color. I'm going to have some different heights of trees. I want it to look like there's different kinds of trees. If you're not sure if it's looking like that, then you might need to back away. Don't worry if you've got your finger on your water. We can just brush that away. That's what that medium is all about, oil and white. And that's why I love the wet on wet technique. It allows you to work on it and it's still wet. You can do so many things with it. You can do portraits and animals and flowers and so it's really versatile technique to, to work with. So. so after you go all the way across, and then what you can do is you can bring some of that green down a little bit farther. So if your tree is bigger, bring a little bit down farther. If your tree is shorter, then just go across. Yeah, so there's two shades of green there. One is just a sap green, just a normal green, and one is a green black. It's a darker shade of green. So I'm just going to kind of tap across. And where I have a bigger tree, I'm going to tap down some. And where I have shorter land, shorter trees, I'm just going to kind of tap across shorter. It's just going to give me some color underneath there, some land for reflections. 
kind of tell them where this land is. Is it close? Is it far? You know, and I'm trying to go a little bit by the shape of my tree as well. If my tree is kind of rounded, I'm going to kind of go a little bit rounded. But believe me, it is not exact at all because we're going to brush this away when we do the reflection. If you need to, one way to cheat if you're doing that, is you can always tip your canvas upside down and go across. So if you can't if you can't focus it this way to understand, you know, sometimes people have a hard time knowing if they need to go bigger or smaller, you can flip your canvas and do it this way and kind of when you're doing a mirror reflection. Sometimes it's easier if you're doing a mirror reflection or if you're really want to get an exact mirror reflection to flip it and try to do it this way because then you're doing the exact same thing. So that's just a little tip. So I'm going to take that big brush and I want you to think about taking three hairs on the side of that brush and touching a baby's cheek. And you can lightly pull down those that, um, what you put on the bottom, that land on the bottom. And then those same three uh, bristles, we're going to just brush across. to set it in, and you can go the opposite way. Now, if you keep brushing across, you'll get more of a dark reflection, which is fine because sometimes when you look at a reflection, you see just a dark shade of color underneath it. Depends on the time of day. Sometimes there's no reflection. Sometimes there's a dark shadow. Sometimes there's a mere reflection. So it just depends. And then I'm also going to just go down here and get rid of my fingerprints of where I touched down here when I was working on those trees. So we're going to take our knife, and I would use the small part of that blade on that knife. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit of white and just kind of rub that blade back and forth. And I'm not going to do a long line. I'm going to do short little uh, rubs back and forth. And it's going to go between the land and where you set your brush to pull down. So it's going to come back in here at the top of the reflection. And I'm just going to rub that back and forth. Now you can put some down on top of that reflection because the land, the water would ripple, but the, the foam part would be at the, where the land is. So I'm going to set it there first and set it and just kind of rub that back and forth a little bit. It, you don't want just a straight line of white. You want this kind of broken up. Your knife needs to be flat. That's why I'm working with the small part. So I can make sure I keep that knife, knife flat and going back and forth. If you do it on an angle, so some people will hold their canvas and do it. If you hold your canvas, make sure though that that blade is still at the same angle as your canvas. If you do it on an angle, it looks like the water's gonna run off your canvas. So just make sure that that blade stays flat as you're working. And you can have light and dark areas because where the water laps up onto the land, you're going to have different amounts of foam that will lap up as well. 
So you're telling the viewers, is it a calm day? Is there a lot of movement in the water? By how much foam there is. So if a motorboat just went by, you could have a whole bunch of foam. Or if there's a lot of movement, there could be a whole bunch of foam. If there's not very much uh, movement, then you wouldn't have as much. So, you know, what's going on with the water there with yours? Is there a lot of movement? Is it real calm? So I'm going to do some and then I'm going to look away. If I have a big chunk, like let's say I just got a big wad of white. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to take my knife, clean knife, and I'm just going to kind of jiggle it out back and forth, back and forth. And I'm going to move that. So you don't have to worry or panic. There's so many different ways to change things. If I still don't like it, I could use that big blade even and move it more. Or I could take my brush and wipe it away. So there's always ways to change things. Or camouflage it. If I don't like that, then I can take my brush. Add some green in my water. Water has green, especially here. Okay, and then I could just do a little bit more in that reflection. And there you go, it's right back. So that's how you would change something if you need to. So now I'm gonna decide how do I want this land in the front? Okay, do I want land? Do I want to bring my water all the way down? Uh, do I want land on one side and water? Um, I could go ahead and put blue on one side and fill it with land. So it's kind of how, how you want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the green that's by the yellow. And I'm going to put land down here at the bottom. I'm going to fill this down here with this light green and I'm going to have land all the way down here. And I'm just going to pull that across and put a thin shade. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit and kind of curve it. And then I'm going to look at it and say, okay, now, how high do I want that to be? Do I like it like that or do I want to take it higher? Okay. Well, maybe I want to take it a little bit higher. So I'm just going to curve that brush and go a little bit higher with it. And maybe I want to round it and make it a little bit higher up here. So you can look away from it and keep working on it until you get it as high over on this side as you want. You can keep rounding it. Maybe you want it flatter. Maybe you want this side to be a little bit higher. Maybe you want it more rounded. Maybe you want it to have more dark in here. Uh, maybe you want some more dark over in here. So you're just going to do a little bit, build it up, do a little bit, build it up. Maybe you want some weeds in there. So I can just do some little pull-ups with that brush and make it look like there's little weeds coming up, a little grassy area. Maybe I want some dark down in here and have it be weedy. Little patch of weeds there needs to be mowed. Or maybe I want some weeds in here. Then maybe I don't like that, so I could blend that away. Okay. Um, maybe I want some more dark over here and have it be weedy. 
and pull some more green in here. I'm using the narrow part of my brush. If I use the wide side, I'm automatically locked into that wide area. But if I use this narrow side, I can do a lot with just that little bit and get a thin area to work with. So I like to work with that narrow side a lot. Maybe I want to take and use one of the small brushes and maybe get some yellow and just uh, pop some little yellow in there, especially in that dark. Maybe have a little bit of yellow flowers or yellow. There's something that's yellow that grows in Tennessee, and I have no idea what it is, but it's really pretty in the fields. Weeds, yeah. It kind of takes over. I don't know what, but it is so pretty. Maybe you don't want any yellow out there. Maybe you just want it all green. I don't know. Maybe I want it to be like grass. In with my grass. I can pull it up. Maybe you just want green. You can put that back in there and pull it up. So see, you're, you can experiment and play. Be like a kid. Kids get to play all the time and adults never take time to play. So take some time to play. Keep working on it. Once you have it the way you like it, then we'll sign it and that will be the end of class for today. So thank you so much for coming and I look forward to seeing you guys again. All right, thank you.